Okay, so the next topic we're going to talk about are functional groups, all right? So functional groups are characteristically bonded group of atoms that determines molecular properties, reactivity, physical properties, regardless of what molecule contains it. And this is really important for this class because this is how organic chemistry is organized, okay? So basically, we're going to work through this semester and next semester all of these different functional groups. We're going to be talking about the functional groups, about the properties, and a lot about the chemical reactions they can undergo, okay? So this semester, we'll cover about half of these functional groups, and then next semester, you'll cover the rest of them in more detail. So we'll learn how to name them, how to, uh, what react chemical reactions they can do, and different sort of concepts around these different functional groups, okay? It's important for us now to be able to identify each functional group. So even though we're not going to go into a lot of detail on something like uh, an aldehyde this semester, right? We still need to be able to recognize it because we will kind of come across it this semester, right? So basically, you have to be familiar with this entire list, right? And there's really two types of problems you can have. I can give you a functional group and ask you to name it, or I can tell you the name of a functional group and you have to draw it. So those are the two skills we have to sort of understand how to, what to do, sort of drawing a functional group or recognizing it and naming it, all right? So you do have to know this entire list here, so we're going to work through these. Again, it's a characteristically bonded group of atoms. So there's what we're looking on, focusing on is what atoms make up the functional group and how are they bonded, all right? So the first one is actually not a functional group. When you have a molecule that has carbon, hydrogen, and carbon, carbon single bonds, they're technically not considered to be a functional group, but they do have a name, and those are called alkanes. Alkanes. Okay? And actually, that's sort of the first quote unquote functional group, technically not one we're going to be talking about. Right. So this is sort of our transition to starting to talk about alkanes. Okay, we'll talk about those first. Alkanes are when you have carbon to hydrogen single bonds and carbon to carbon single bonds. Those are called alkanes. So let's start going through the list here. The next functional group is called an alkene. An alkene is when you have a carbon double bonded to another carbon. Okay. So then here you can see a structure of these. That's a carbon-carbon double bond. That's called an alkene. An alkyne is when you have a carbon triple bond to another carbon, right? So alkenes, you have two sp2 hybridized carbons. Alkynes, you have two sp hybridized carbons connected to each other. Right? So again, you can kind of look at an example here. This is called, this molecule is called acetylene, right? It's used in welding. Here we have a carbon-carbon triple bond. The next functional group is called a benzene ring. Okay, so this is not called an alkene. A benzene ring is interesting because you have to have six carbons in a circle. So you have six carbons in a circle with alternating double bonds. Okay, six carbons in a ring, alternating double bonds. That's called a benzene ring. So if you look at this example here, here we have a benzene ring. It would be incorrect to call this an alkene. Okay, now if you had a ring of eight carbons, that's not a benzene ring. If you had a, a ring of six carbons and it only had one double bond, that's not a benzene ring. You have to have six carbons in a ring with three double bonds. That's called a benzene ring. Next are alkyl halides, also called haloalkanes, but we call them alkyl halides. Okay, what we'll see here is we're using this abbreviation, this letter X, 
X stands for a halogen. It can be F, C, L, B, R, or I. So when I'm talking about general alkyl halides, right, we can just use the letter X here. And that means I have one of those, a fluorine, a chlorine, bromine, or iodine. Okay, sometimes that might be a bromine. So if this was a bromine, right, it wouldn't be an alkyl halide. We'd call it an alkyl bromide. Right, so if X was actually a Br, that's an alkyl bromide. If X if was a Cl, that would be an alkyl chloride. Right. F would be fluoride, I would be iodide, all right? So if we look here, we have multiple halogens connected, right? So this is, again, an alkyl halide. Here we have four of these, but we could just as easily have a molecule, okay? We could just as easily have a molecule that only has one halogen, right? So if I draw this molecule here, right, again, that is an alkyl halide because we have our carbon single bonded to a halogen. Our next functional group is called an alcohol. An alcohol is when you have a carbon connected to an O, which is connected to an H. So that's a carbon OH. That is an alcohol, right? You'll notice here I'm not drawing a bond between that. We can, right? So you could draw a carbon and an O and an H. It's okay to draw it this way, right? I could draw the lone pairs in. A lot of times I don't have to. We have to understand how many there actually are, right? But when we're drawing large molecules, sometimes we want to draw them quickly. So you'll see a lot of times in alcohols, you may not draw that bond and you'll just write OH, right? And you don't always have to draw in the lone pairs. You have to know how many there are, but you don't always have to draw them in, right? So here's an alcohol we're familiar with. This is ethanol, right? We'll learn how to name these later. And again, there's our alcohol here. Let me just erase and draw the actual alcohol. Our next functional group is interesting. It's called a phenol. A phenol is basically a benzene ring directly connected to an alcohol. So it's incorrect to call this an alcohol. It's incorrect to call it a benzene ring. It is a phenol. Okay, a phenol is when you have a six-membered ring, alternating double bonds. One of those carbons is connected to an OH, okay? So if you look at this molecule here, I'm just going to highlight there is our phenol, right? And you'll notice, like, molecules can have multiple functional groups. They often do. Here's two other functional groups, and we'll learn how to name those a little later. But the highlighted one is called a phenol. Our next functional group is called an ether. Okay, that's when you have a carbon, single bond to an O, single bond to another carbon. So carbon, O, carbon. Okay, here's a common ether. This is called ethyl ether or diethyl ether. And you can see that here, carbon, O, carbon. Okay, so that is called an ether. As we go down our list, the next functional group is called an epoxide. This is a three-membered ring consisting of two carbons and an oxygen. So we have a three-membered ring, carbon, carbon, O, that's called an epoxide. So here's the uh, epoxide functional group. Next is a thiol. A thiol is like an alcohol, but instead of having an O, you have an S. S is right below oxygen on the periodic table, so it bonds exactly the same way. So a thiol is carbon connected to SH. Again, in our bond line structure, we can see that functional group here. Okay. Next functional group we have is called a sulfide. That's just like an ether, but instead of an oxygen, we have a sulfur. Carbon, sulfur, carbon. That's called a sulfide. So we can look here. Here is our sulfide there. But again, note, look, this is also has an alkyl halide, carbon connected to halogens. Okay, but this is an example of a sulfide. A disulfide is important in proteins. A disulfide is when you have carbon to sulfur to sulfur to carbon. So we have carbon connected to a sulfur, to a sulfur, and then another carbon. That's called a disulfide, okay?
Next functional group we have is called an amine. An amine is when you have a carbon connected to a nitrogen. Okay, now this nitrogen could be connected to two hydrogens, right? It could be connected to two carbons, right? It just depends, so it can be either of those, but we have to have a carbon-nitrogen bond, and that's called an amine. So here, we, this is called a diamine because we have two of them, carbon-nitrogen, carbon-nitrogen. Okay, the next set of functional groups all contain what's called a carbonyl group. A carbonyl group is a C double bond O. Okay, so what we're going to see is everything here is going to have a C double bond O with two other things connected to it. So the name of the functional group is going to depend upon what these two things are. All right. A carbonyl is technically not a functional group. It's not considered a functional group by itself, but it makes up a whole bunch of those, okay? So again, we just sort of need to highlight what are these two things attached to the carbonyl. So the next functional group we have is a ketone. A ketone is when you have a carbonyl connected to a carbon on the left and a carbon on the right, okay? So here we can see that is called a ketone. This particular ketone is called acetone. That's the solvent we use. The next functional group is called an aldehyde. Here we have our carbonyl. On one side you have a carbon, the other side you have a hydrogen. Okay, so if you look here at our aldehyde, here's our aldehyde, carbon to carbonyl to an H. What's the other functional group we have here? A six-membered ring that's called a benzene ring. So here we have a benzene ring and an aldehyde. The next functional group we have is called a carboxylic acid. A carboxylic acid has a C double bond O, or carbonyl, a carbon on the left, and an OH on the right. It is not correct to call this an alcohol because it's not. It's a carboxylic acid, okay? One thing to note, there's an a, abbreviation for a carboxylic acid, that's CO2H, and at the end of the video, I'll go back and talk about some of the abbreviations we can use, the shorthand, okay? So if we look at our example here, here's our carboxylic acid, carbon, carbonyl, OH. The next functional group, you can see they're getting more complex, is called an ester, that's different than an ether. In an ester, you have your carbonyl, a carbon on the left. The carbon could be on the right, of course, right? They could be inverted. So one side, you have a carbon. The other, you have an oxygen and a carbon. So we have C, carbonyl, O, carbon, or it could be carbon, O, carbonyl, carbon. All right, so if we look here, there is our ester, carbon, carbonyl, oxygen, carbon and that's different than an ether. That's called an ester. The next functional group is an amide. An amide has a carbon, our carbonyl, and then it's again connected to a nitrogen. Okay, so we've got a carbon on one side and nitrogen on the other. All right, so if we look here, carbon, carbon, carbonyl to N. Okay, that is our amide. All right, these are really important in proteins. It's how you connect amino acids. Next functional group is called an acid chloride. Again, we've got a carbonyl, carbon on one side, a chlorine on the other. Okay, so here's our example of our functional group in acid chloride. Now, if this was a bromine, right, instead of a Cl, if that was a bromine, then we would obviously call this an acid bromide. The next functional group, and this is our last carbonyl, is pretty complex. It's called an acid anhydride, or a lot of people just call it an anhydride. So that word acid is optional. You can call this an anhydride. In an anhydride, you have a carbon, a carbonyl, an oxygen, another carbonyl, and another carbon. Okay, so we have carbon, carbonyl, O, carbonyl, carbon.
All right, and then here's an example of an anhydride here. We see we have carbon, carbonyl, oxygen. And a lot of times these are symmetric. Both sides look the same. Okay, so that's really sort of the list of all the carbonyls we have. We still have a few more functional groups we need to cover. Next is called an imine. An imine, this is when we have a carbon connected to a nitrogen via a double bond. There's a double bond. If it was a single bond, it would be called an amine. But when it's a C double bond end, it's called an imine. Okay, so here's an example of an imine. We have a carbon double bonded to a nitrogen. So both the carbon and nitrogen are sp2 hybridized. Next is a nitrile. That's a carbon with a triple bond to an N, right? So both the carbon and the nitrogen are sp hybridized. So Anytime you have a C triple bond N, that is called a nitrile, nitrile. And then the last functional group we have is called a nitro group. That's when you have an N double bonded to an O and then a single bond to an O minus, right? So if you look at sort of our counting our formal charges, the nitrogen has a plus because it only has four valence, wants five. The oxygen has a minus. It has seven valence electrons, only wants to have six. So that's called a nitro group. All right, so here you can see there's our nitro group here. And again, there, this has actually three nitro groups. This example is TNT, trinitrotoluene. All right. And then again, you can see another functional group here. That's actually a benzene ring. All right. So a lot of times there's some shorthand for these, so I want to make sure we know those. A lot of them, you can see them. So a nitro group, if we look at the shorthand, you can just call that NO2, right? That's what you have here, or NO2. So nitro can have a shorthand NO2. The other common shorthands you can see for an ester, this isn't really a shorthand, but I'm just going to kind of write this out, RCO2R, right? Remember, R means we have some number of carbons. It could be one carbon, it could be two. R just means we have some carbons attached there. So esters can be abbreviated R, CO2, R. But really the most common ones we have to know are carboxylic acid, aldehyde, and alcohols. All right. So again, I'm going to use the letter R here. And so instead of that carbon, I'm going to do R. So sort of the shorthand or sort of the formulaic version is RCO2H. So CO2H means you have a carboxylic acid, C double bond O, OH. So that's, oops, that's a really important one, okay? Aldehydes have an abbreviation with them. That would be RCHO, RCHO. So there's our R connected to a C, double bond O to an H, right? And then if we go all the way up back up to alcohol, where's alcohol? Alcohol, again, is you can have something like R, and I'll just write CH2OH, right? So here we have RCH2OH. So notice alcohol, CH2OH, aldehyde, RCHO, carboxylic acid, RCO2H. So those are a little different to understand the different functional groups that you have. Okay, so you need to be familiar with all of these functional groups. You need to be able to recognize them. If I gave you a structure, recognize the functional groups. Or if I give you the name of the functional group, you have to be able to draw it.